Welcome to the Parenting with Impact podcast with your hosts, Elaine Taylor-Klaus and Diane Dempster, co-creators of ImpactParents.com, an online community, award-winning blog, and service organization, helping parents all over the world to raise complex kids become capable, independent adults. Elaine and Diane are certified coaches with personal experience raising children with challenges such as ADHD, anxiety, and more, and extensive experience in guiding parents to raise their complex kids with confidence and calm. On the podcast, Elaine and Diane interview experts, bringing you cutting-edge information about your child's challenges, teach you real-life strategies to create lasting change, and demonstrate how coaching can guide you to parent your complex kids one conversation at a time. For the essentials of Elaine and Diane's coach approach to parenting, download a free tip sheet at impactparents.com slash podcast. Welcome back, everybody. It's been another conversation in the Parenting with Impact podcast. It's just us. You Today me. it's us. And we're going to riff on a topic that shows up a lot in our world. Oh, right? personally and professionally. And in every parent we work with, and probably in every relationship dynamic there is, we're going to talk about resentment. Resentment, dun, dun, dun. (sighs) It's such a complicated issue. We just started talking about it before we started recording. We're like, now let's just wait and talk about it because there's so many No, because we just like, we kept going and going and going away. Like, stop, like rewind. Let's start from the beginning again. So Resentment. So resentment. Why right. does resentment show up in our community so much? Because it shows well, up in every every dynamic, but especially in ours. It does. And the and the quote I, I learned from my one of my coaches a long time ago was that expectations are resentments waiting for happen, waiting to happen. Okay. Right. So we have an expectation and it doesn't happen, and we don't adjust our expectation. And it's just sort of it's this over and over and over again. And We think it's going to be different than it is. And we start getting resentful because it's not changing. Right. And I guess I look at it very similarly in that resentment is often what happens when our expectations aren't met. Right. Right. When we have this vision of what we think it's going to be, it's usually not as well communicated as we'd like, which, you know, we can come back to in a minute. And so something happens. And so it's really kind of an expression of disappointment. Well, and I think the thing is in our world, right? So let's reel it back to parents of complex kids is we feel like we're doing more than we should be doing, but we don't know how to help our kids to do more. And then we feel like we're doing everything. And then the thing we try doesn't work. I mean, there's this sort of cycle that we end up in where it's like, I've tried everything and I'm resentful because I'm doing more than I want to be doing. And I don't feel like I'm making progress. Or I don't feel like I'm appreciated. I mean, sometimes Mm, it's I'm doing what I feel like I should be doing or want to be doing, and you don't appreciate all that I'm doing for you. And that can create a lot of resentment. I really, I hear this from parents all the time is, you know, they don't appreciate, they don't. And the truth is it's their gratitude is a good 10, 15 years away. Yeah, sorry. That's a whole other conversation, which is how do you feel good in the midst of, you know, right. how do you give yourself gratitude for what you're doing? Maybe I don't but know. So that kind of goes back to resentment is what happens when people are disappointed in something. It's not meeting their expectations and whether they've created it, you know, I, the, the example I often use is, you know, you put the shoes on the stairs and you assume they know you're, they're supposed to take their shoes up the stairs and they don't because you've told them to take the shoes up the stairs two weeks ago and they haven't. And so now I'm resentful because you're not taking the shoes up the stairs because you know I want you to and you're not. So therefore you're doing it to be just, you know. Well, and here's the thing, right? Whole so cycle. We all have disappointments, right? And the question is what turns them into a resentment? But I think that what happens a lot, I was talking to a mom the other day and she's like, okay, I know that I want it this way and it's not happening. And, and when things, when I get disappointed, her go-to is action. So I'm going to do something about it, right? It's a sort of, so we're in this situation with our kids where things aren't going the way that we want them to go. But the reality is that it's not either we need to be patient. We need to take time. We need to wait for our kids to step up or it's not ours to do, right? And so it's this sort of lack of control, with a disappointment. So I'm disappointment in this, in this situation. I don't want to just leave it the way it is because it's not okay with me, but I can't fix it. So I don't know what else to do. 
And this just in, right? When we don't know what to do, we go to the mental stuff, right? So if, if I can't fix the situation, I'm going to worry about it. Or I'm going to feel resentful about it because it feels better than doing nothing and just letting it sit. Mm-hmm. So the thing that you said at the beginning of that, like just totally got my attention, which is what turns disappointment or sadness or worry into resentment, like whatever that precipitating emotion is like something yeah. happens that has to do. And I think it has to do with expectation. Well, it has to do with uncommunicated with, expectation. Well, and disempowerment, right? It's a sort of, if we feel like we can't fix it, right? It's just sort mm. of, again, the natural reaction when we're just, dis- when we feel disappointed in something or an expectation isn't met, we want to fix it. We want to change it. We want to do something. And so if we don't have the power in this situation or the ability in this situation to fix it. Mm -hmm. So there's not a sense of agency over it. Yeah. There's there's something about, I feel out of control. Right. And then the other piece of it is the not feeling seen, right? It's just sort of, if I feel like I've been working my tail off and nobody's noticing, you know, sometimes if we work our tails off and then that something changes, we feel okay, right? It's just sort of, we're working really hard and we see the progress and we're like, yay, awesome. And that's enough for us. But if we're working really hard, but the progress isn't as evident, I think most of us need somebody to say, hey, you're working really hard, Diane. Hey, Elaine, yeah. you're working so really hard. Need, well, and I keep thinking we're talking about parents here, but we're also talking about kids. Like right. this has kind of been a theme for us today because we did another podcast with Kate Barrett today. We recorded that. And, and very similarly, like what we, what our kids need from us, we need from others, whether it's right. kids or other adults or coaches or whatever. And it's to be seen. It's to be acknowledged. It's to be respected. It's to be understood to, you know, all of those things are every bit as important for us as parents as they are for our kids. And we work really hard to create that for our kids. And then we kind of look out and we go, if if we don't get it from our co-parent or sometimes our kids, although that's less likely, or maybe our own parents or siblings or friends, that can also begin to build resentment. Well, so let's shift gears because I think that that's, so I think we've kind of talked a lot about kind of what leads to resentment and, and some of the backdrop I think that there's this transition phase, which is the, for me, the reality that resentment doesn't really help anything. Oh, no. Right? But wait, can we just go into what happens when you get resentful first? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There? Okay. Because as you were talking, I'm thinking like, like the biggest shift for me when I discover coaching, biggest bar none, probably, I'm going to say that and then I'm going to qualify it because you know, okay. I never like to say absolutes, was I was so, so damn resentful yeah. Of, yeah me too of everything and of of my kids and of my husband and of my friends and like i resented my friends seemed to have it so easy or they didn't understand me or they were judging me and my husband wasn't doing what i needed and my kids weren't you know, like there was so much resentment built up that it was like this wall i created around myself yeah but the well, thing is, is that it was my wall Right. I and that's, that's the piece of it. You created it. Right. And it's a sort of, and it's impacting you, right. It's a sort of, right. it stresses us out. I mean, any unmet expectation is going to create stress. I mean, that's if go back and teach the trigger management piece. It's like, if we have an unmet expectation, it creates stress in our bodies. And so resentment is just this ball of, in, you know, bleh, <laughs> what's to say catabolic energy, right? It's this sort of intense blah energy that kind of lives in our body that is, it's hard to carry around. It makes us unwelcome of good things. It helps. I mean, it's, what do they call it? Something biased where it's like, if you, if you're only focused on the stuff that's not working, it's hard to even see the good stuff, mm-hmm. you know, it's, and so resentment is just this buildup of, energy in our body. And ultimately it's, it's ours. Well, there was a quote from a a piece I wrote about resentment years ago. I was actually referencing a a piece that my husband had written for us even before that. Um, And the notion was that when things crumble in relationships, when they get challenged, it's usually because of what's unspoken rather than what's spoken. And resentment happens and it builds when 
as we said, when our expectations are out of sync with our reality and we aren't talking about it, we're not processing it, we're not asking for what we want. We're just growing resentful of the fact that it's not how we want it to be, but we're not communicating that effectively. Well, and here's the piece, right? Because it's, I, and I know I, I can just hear you all listening, saying this, but it's a sort of, you have asked for what you want and yeah. the person you're asking, <laughs> but the person you're asking, but it's an unrealistic expectation, right? It's a sort of, if I keep saying, but I just want you to pick up your shoes, I just want you to pick up your shoes. And it's not happening. We can say, well, it's because they don't care. We can say, wow, this person's having a really hard time picking up their shoes. Do I need to help them remember? Do I need to help them pick up their shoes? Or do I need to just pick up their shoes so I don't feel resentful anymore? But, but here's the trap to that, right? Is that it's not just enough to say, can you pick up your shoes? Or can I help you pick up your shoes? Because there's the how we ask. There's the how we're communicating. That's such a key part of this. That's that's why we use the coach approach because we're shifting. Because what happens is we get resentful and then we start nagging. Yeah. Right. Or then we start we remind or we try to fix it. Well, and and so that example could be an amazing way to approach it, and it could be yet another way of trying to fix them that then breeds their resentment on top of our resentment and creates a hot mess. So it's, it's really important that we kind of slow down and look at when I get clear on what I want, what's the most effective way to communicate and ask for it in a way that's not confrontive and a way that's respectful of the other person and enrolling them in that process instead of having them feel like it's one more barrier for them. Well, and that it's something that they want to, right? It's just sort of, I can ask mm-hmm. till the cows come home, but if I haven't enrolled them and, and they're not interested in it, do it. So there's three things we've already identified. It's like the sort of bottom line, it's a gap in expectation and I'm not getting what I want, right? So part of it, maybe I'm a, I'm tired of asking for it or I'm afraid to ask for it. Or I, you know, we talked about just gonna be how you ask again. for it. Yeah. I'm tired of asking for it. It's this sort of, I'm asking for it, but I'm not doing it in a way that the person is is hearing. I'm asking for it, but it may not be realistic to get from the other person. I mean, there's all these different pieces. <clears throat> I guess what I what I keep coming back to is this sort of okay. It's still you want to solve <laughs> you want yeah, it's still your resentment. So you want to solve the problem, right? And so let's separate the resentment from solving the problem because here's the reality: if you're feeling resentment around a situation, you're not going to be, can I say this gently? Collaboratively you're not going to be effectively, problem solving. You're not right. going to be effectively problem solving, period, right? right? It's just sort of because you're going to be fighting, you're going to be blaming, you're going to be pointing the finger, you're going to be judging. irritated, judging, you're going to be doing all these sorts of things. Hurt. Yeah. You're going to be operating from the wrong part of your brain because you're going to be, when all those things happen, you're in your emotional part of your brain instead of your problem solving part of your brain. So the reality is you've got to figure out how to move past the resentment on some level to solve your problem effectively. Let me say that again. You have to figure out how to move past the resentment on some level in order to get to the place where you can even start solving the problem. Okay. And so as you say that, there are all these people listening who are like, well, if I knew how to do that, <laughs> right? And do you hear the resentment in that? Right. Like, There's a resentment now, in that. Now right? you're resenting us. For- <laughs> <laughs> and that's the piece, right? So Just this piece, I'm going to go back to that. What we, we just said, if you don't know how to solve the problem, feeling resentful, it feels better than not knowing not, how to been, solve the problem. Been disempowered, right? Yes, exactly. I'd yeah. rather feel mad about something than out of control or, mm-hmm. or like a victim. Or helpless. Helpless. Right. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So I think what I'm hearing, right, is that when we identify resentment. And that's maybe that's the the way to talk about it is to really notice when our behavior is coming from resentment Mm -hmm. and to begin for ourselves, because so, so I want to go back to, to that notion. Resentment is ours. They're not making us feel resentful, Mm -hmm. right? We are creating that wall because it's too hard to feel disempowered because we feel helpless because, because blah, 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 blah. We've talked about that. But the result of that is that we create this wall and which means we can take down this wall, right? And what I hear you saying, Diane, is in order to effectively problem solve, to collaboratively problem solve, we have to take that wall down. And so the real 
question is, how do we recognize that we've created the wall in the first place and begin to kind of chip away at it and yeah. pull it apart? Well, and I don't know about you, but like, I know what resentment feels like in my body. It's like this sort of, and I drew a picture. I don't even know if I, I could probably find it, put it in the show notes or something of, of the energy, but it's like a barbed wire ball, right? It's this sort of, that sits probably around my heart when I start feeling resentful because it's like this sort of, nobody can get in, nothing's getting out. I'm just like creating this protective shell that's kind of prickly and uncomfortable and everything else. And and so I think, you know, for me, I go back to the body. It's like the sort of noticing where, what does it feel like to feel resentful? What are the thoughts that go through your head? Really kind of paying attention to yourself in that state of resentment to begin to get awareness to it because so often we just kind of fall into it and all of a sudden we're there, but we don't even know that we're there. Well, and I think that was, that was definitely key for me was, was that I was so resentful and I was sure, okay, y'all listen. I was sure it was everybody else's problem. Yeah. I was sure that it was my kids and it was my spouse and that it was that, that if they would just understand what I was going through, they would see that and they would I do was it trying different. so hard and I was doing so well. And they were the ones that were causing all these problems. And really underneath it, what was preventing me from, from addressing all of these problems was my own resentment was in the way. Mm-hmm. Right. So identifying resentment is really what we've been talking about is getting really clear on what your stuff is, what your messages are and getting and I've, and I've had this conversation with a lot of clients, Diane, so let's talk about this for a second. When I say your resentment is yours and you've created, some parents have a really hard time with that. Like they yeah. really resist that. How dare you? I'm trying, I'm working so hard, uh, but I'm doing everything for everyone. But, but, but. So yeah. any other thoughts on that? Like how No, you- and I think that it gets back to this sort of, I'm, I'm thinking about the, the levels of energy, right? It's just sort of, so we've got, and we have, we haven't done a podcast on this, but like victimhood, which we were talking about earlier is the most stress producing energy. And then being mad actually is less stress producing than feeling helpless or feeling like a victim. We want to get to the third catapult you out. Right? right. Exactly. So we're just floating down between the most stress producing energies instead of going, okay, wait, what's next? What's the next, what's, what's even less stress producing less stress producing is action. And I think that that's the piece of it is this sort of, maybe it's just about doing something productive, right? So it may be distracting yourself and focusing on another project or another thing or something where you can feel productivity and action, because then you might get a little bit of an energy boost and then go back to the situation that feels unsolvable. The other piece of it is to be able to, and, and this is the language I use all the time, you need to be willing to consider that you can be more effective in solving the problem if you're not feeling resentful than if you are, Mm. you know, I think that that's the piece of it. You've got to be willing to consider that feeling resentful is part of what gets in the way of problem solving. Well, and so as you said that what came up and we we alluded to it earlier is, is when you're resentful, you're blaming, right? You can't not like, right. You're resentful because you're saying, that I resent that that situation is put upon me. Yeah. And so whether you're blaming an individual or their circumstances, there's still a blame going on. And when there's blame well, going on, there's no acceptance of this. Well, situation. and I think that that's the piece of it is that so many of us have tried so many millions of things. And so we mm-hmm. do feel like, okay, the only other solution is. Must be somebody else. Is must be somebody <laughs> else, right? It must be somebody else. And. I think that that's the piece of it is to sort of, if we, we've changed our focus, then it's all about them. And we have zero control over other humans, right? We have influence, but we have zero control. True. So it is a truth y'all. We, we can't control what happens. We can only control how we respond to what happens. And that is the crux of this. Yeah. Is that when we're trying to control it, when we're trying to control them, we're going to get frustrated and, and at risk of resentment. When we right. let go of trying to control it and start figuring out how to work with it, then we can do that from a place of tolerance or acceptance or respect or compassion or all these other emotions and, and thoughts are, are available to us 
that aren't available from a place of resentment. And then it takes us back to a place of problem solving and experimentation, right? That word mm-hmm. experimentation was like kicking in, right? Our ability, if we're trying to fix it and solve it and just get it done with, we're going to handle this situation very differently. And, and the reality is that a lot of the problems that we face as parents require a lot of trial and error and mm-hmm. building on what we've done in the past. And, you know, I think those of you who are in our programs will learn. It's like, I've got to figure out which tool am I using right now? Where am I taking aim? I mean, all of these sorts of things that are so critical when you've got a problem to be able to say, yep, I've had this problem for two years. Is this, you know, where am I in the process? Where am I taking aim? What is the tool that I'm working on? Or do you know what? Do I need to let, set this problem on the side for a while? Go work on something else. Again, that's sort of, do I feel a get little a bit more productive? Under your belt. Yeah. Right, exactly. It's like, okay, I've been trying to get my kid to pick their shoes up for, for two years. Okay, well, that's a long time to try to solve one problem. Maybe it's your kid's not ready for whatever reason, or, you know, you've, you've done everything you can, or you need a fresh perspective, but getting into that more experimentation mode can be really helpful. Well, and what I love about what you're saying, I'm thinking about the number of years it took to, I was, one of my kids was just trying to get them to learn to use a calendar. Mm -hmm. Um, Two out of my three kids now do, right? (laughs) One well, hasn't gotten there yet, but it took years. And it's not like that was all we focused on in those years. There were times where we kind of focus on it and then we'd leave it and go do something else. And then we'd come back to that. And then we'd leave it and do, do something else. And, and so that notion of, we kind of want to take aim on where we can build some successes and help our kids feel a sense of success, help take aim on something that's in it for them. Because as they start feeling more successful, that in of itself will begin to reduce some of our resentment if they can work with us on anything, even if it's not the issue we thought was the primary issue, right. even if it's not the towel on the floor or the laundry or the kitchen, you know, food all over the kitchen or out of the kitchen, whatever the issue is that you start getting resentful. I've told you a million times, why can't you just stop eating in the living room? Right. Well, which takes us back to the thing we talk about all the time, which is focusing on something that's their agenda, right? It's yes. a sort of If you can find a change that they want to see, something that they want different, even if it's like, I want mom to stop nagging me about my shoes in the hallway. Okay. So that's the agreement. It's like, I'll, I'll commit to not nagging you about the shoes in the, in the hallway. What I need from you is to identify something else that we are working on so that we can see some change and some progress and create some focus. Right. So we need to start wrapping up this conversation. Um, I feel like we did a great job talking about resentment, identifying where it comes from, kind of how it shows up, what our ownership of it is. Um, I'll point, we'll put in the show notes, there's an article on the site called Resentment in the Time of Quarantine, which kind of gives you some tools, you know, kind of a three-step process about that we've been talking about taking aim, using some communication strategies specifically to, to design around, you know, addressing something. What else do we want to say before we wrap this up, Diane? What have we what have we missed that you want to make sure? We you know, today? here's what I want to I want. <laughs> this is always our wrap up, right? Be gentle with yourself. I mean, this is Elaine and I both talked about just how big that word resentment was as a player in both of our lives, and I, I didn't talk and a lot about years. my story, but you've you've heard my story, and it's you know it's hard. This stuff is hard, and it's a natural sort of thing, and and knowing that feeling resentful is a normal, natural reaction to the mind numbing challenges that we deal with every day as parents. Mm -hmm. And so be gentle with yourself and be willing to consider that there's a, there's a lighter way, an easier way, a more gentle way, something that doesn't like stress you out so much. And it starts with us. And, and, you know, on some level, what we haven't said yet. So this is where I want to wrap. I I realize is that We talk a lot about our perspective creates our reality Mm -hmm. and how we see something is going to influence how we take action as a result of that. Mm -hmm. And resentment is a perspective, right? When we hold resentment, we're looking at it from a lens that said a perspective that's something like, you don't care. It's not, you don't, you don't, you don't love me. You don't care about yourself. You're not trying, you're not motivated, but it's, it's got a, um, an energy to it and a perspective to it that's not particularly helping us, as we've said all along, problem solve. And so I think what we're really 
saying is, you know, think about what else is also possibly true. What's another perspective that you can hold that can serve in the, serve you in moving towards problem solving. Awesome. Great conversation. Always. Thanks Thanks, everybody. Everybody remember what you do for yourself, for your kids. It matters. It makes a difference. So be conscious, be, be intentional, be kind to yourself, show yourself grace. And we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, everybody. Take care, everyone. You've been listening to the Parenting with Impact podcast with Elaine and Diane. For more information on the Impact Parents community or to join Sanity School for Parents, please visit impactparents.com. If you like what you've heard, please share this podcast with friends who need similar guidance and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts.